Well, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode. So today's book is book 25. Tell us, Chris, what book 25 is. Yeah, um, I don't think you've read this one, right? It's called it's called The Alchemy of Air. Um, the, uh, I have not. I have not. Uh, it's a it's a really really interesting book by um, by the author Thomas Hager. I've actually now read three of his books, and he's I'm becoming a really big fan of his. He uh, he he's a uh, he's like a scientific writer about like medicine and disease, and I don't know what his background actually is, but he 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 writes some really cool stories. Um, the, is he um, a scientist of some sort? I'm not sure actually. I th I think he is, um, but I um I I think it's I don't I don't know. Um, I don't want to even guess because. He he must be because he has a very deep desire and knowledge to dive into these kind of topics and, and mm -hmm. science and chemistry and drugs and stuff like that. So uh, I'll have to look it up, though. Um, but either way, I, I'm really enjoying his books. Um, this this particular book is called The, uh, the Alchemy of Air. Mm -hmm. It's about a Jewish genius, a doomed tycoon and the scientific discovery that fed the world but fueled the rise of Hitler. Um, is that two, two person or is it one person? What's that? A oh, Jewish so genius and yeah. a, and a uh, doom tycoon. That's two person, right? Yep, it's about two people. So okay, um, okay. The, the story is about um, at, at a high level. It's the story of turning um, air into fertilizer. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, there was at the at the beginning of apparently the, the century. I didn't know this stuff until I read this book. But like um, the, at the, apparently at the beginning of last century, so like in the early 1900s, um, there was a burgeoning uh, food crisis um, around the world where uh, people were worried, you know, that we were over growing too fast, overpopulating the world, and, and that we were running out of um, uh, farmable land of how to produce crops fast enough to, to be able to feed the world, you know, with our agric ag agricultural, you know, uh, um, revolution that we've talked about, like in Sapiens in the past and stuff like that. And now that that was what was sustaining us and feeding us and and people were like, look, I don't, I don't know how we're going to keep feeding people. Like we're out of, we're out of fertilizer. We're out of land. We're out of, we can't, we can't just manufacture this stuff. So um, apparently fertilizer, um, you know, you find it in things like, like poop and, you know, guava, iguano and uh, other like, you know, natural occurring fertilizers that are out there in this world. But it's, it's, it's the nitrogen that's in it apparently that that's like so powerful. So um, what uh, these, these, this Jewish, uh, um, genius and a doomed tycoon did uh, their names were Carl uh, uh, Bosch and uh, Fritz Haber um, they uh, they invented this thing called the the Haber Bosch methodology where they somehow through trial and error and a lot of different you know creative you know things figured out how to take nitrogen from the atmosphere uh, distill it down into a a form that they can turn it into fixed nitrogen to then manufacture synthetic fertilizer basically and that and that's what ultimately this whole story is about their, their process of, of discovering this, of understanding it, of how, it, and then it's create manufacturing it and turning, putting processes around it. And this was all during the time of like, you know, Nazi Germany and um, uh, actually ended up uh, fertilizer is one of the big things for the war, you know, cause they had to grow crops and they had to, they had to produce weapons and bombs and stuff like that. So like this was a big, you know, initiative for the Nazi Germany to be able to help them to sustain their war machine as well as feed their people. And, um, you know, this was actually, you know, the German industry, I guess, is uh, um, how this all came about. And, and in general, they were already searching for these things, but then it just happened to time up with that the same, same time. And that's, that's why the end of the title says, you know, how it helped fuel the rise of Hitler, because in a weird way, it did help sustain their population longer, you know, because they were able to feed them and produce more arms. Anyway, long story short, that's, that's the book. Um, the reflection that I wrote was, you know, humans, uh, am I even sharing my screen? I'm not, am I? No, uh, no, you're not. Yeah. Uh, so the reflection that I wrote uh, was called humans versus the, versus the universe and who will win. Um, you know, this whole story just kind of blew me away, to be honest with you. I mean, the, the, the idea that, that, that these two guys and, 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 and a bunch of people in a, you know, figured out how to take, nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into synthetic fertilizer like it's it's it just blows your mind to think some of the things that humans can do uh, we have like this uncanny ability as we've talked about in the past like we're we're the creators right like that's what you know there's decomposers and there's we're the composers, composers. Our job, yeah we're <laughs> the composers right you know so we we find ways to to 
slowly and sh- but surely unlock the little secrets of the universe, you know, to be able to sustain our our species, you know, and to grow and, and to leap millions of years in the future where other species can't do these things because we figured out a way to take nitrogen out of the atmosphere, turn it into fertilizer so we could eat more food so we could sustain our calories and, you know, and produce more, uh, produce more humans, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and like, that's a big deal. But at the same time, it always is the same thing with us. You know, it's like, it's always so short-sighted where we, where we, you know, solve one problem. It's like we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. We don't really work. The consequences be damned. We're the composers. We just figure shit out. And then, and then, you know, uh, um, the, we'll see what happens. In, we'll pay, we'll see what happens in the future. It's like, a, I'm never in a game of whack-a-mole. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, it just kind of makes me feel like the the universe is sitting there almost chuckling watching watching their their composers you know that they created in this universe like let us play this game over and over again where they give us this tiny little nugget this little secret that that they that we help to that that we get to unlock and then all of a sudden you know uh you know we think that we know what's going on really like this the universe has been playing this infinite game for forever where they have these like finely tuned checks and balances in place you know where it keeps everybody in harmonious order and then all of a sudden our dumb little asses come out here and we're the composers and we just want to go do some crazy stuff. And, you know, it's like this, you know, it feels like there's like a big brother in the sky that's just like, you know, sitting back and chuckling, like, look at these idiots. They just figured out how to grow from a billion people to, to you know, now to, I don't know, 20 billion people. I don't, I don't know. Well, eventually at some point in time, I'll, I'll put my finger down on this and stop this whole thing, you know, and, uh, or maybe they won't, I don't know. Um, but uh, I just thought it was a really interesting story and a really interesting, it just made me think like, you know, how, how brilliant we are and at the same time you know how stupid and short-sighted we are and we're always kind of just robbing peter to pay paul but at the same uh-huh. time like you know we, we we can do some amazing stuff but like it's just you know it's just sometimes it's just short-sighted um so my my question that i that i was left with that i wanted to leave uh, any other anybody else um following along with this reflection was you know how do the actions that you make impact all the things going on around you and and to not you know like uh, who the hell knows what that this one tiny discovery is going to do to feed the rest of the world and and what changes this will make into the in, into the balance you know of the of, of the the world that you know the universe has already created i don't know but at the end of the day you know yeah it's just it's an interesting thing to think about what, what are your thoughts so the uh reflection title human versus humans versus the universe who will win uh right. to me that's a pretty easy uh question oh, answer um, <laughs> but we but we don't think so like i mean we we see we always in the long run trying. the universe will win uh of course by yeah. by far i mean uh, we are a tiny speck in a tiny blip in the universe and even though we have the you know the adaptability to get ourselves out of a sticky situation and we also tend to have the um, the knack for getting ourselves into sticky situations. <laughs> right, right. Uh, we just we do, we don't we do not think long term at all. Like we we are we are very 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 near term. We things. we only know what we know. We don't know what we don't know. Right, right. And we are we are basically uh, taking whatever the universe gives us and throw away everything and only the piece that we know and say hey this is this is all there is right uh similar to uh kahneman's uh yeah what you see is kahneman's book right? you know, thinking yeah. fast and slow what yeah. you see is all there is yeah but in reality what you see is, ne- is never all there is that's point like zero 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 one percent of what's out there you know and the and all the ripple effects of you know right you know, the, yeah. right yeah and so so it's it's um to me, it's all about uh, having a compound um, selections, a compound effect. So we know about compound effect, right? Little things tend to add up, but because we do so many little, little right things, they compound to our adaptability. Just like we have the ability to be adaptable and we pass on the genes that is most, uh, you know, crucial for survival so <laughs> we, we 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 get more adaptable and more flexible as as our generations continue to grow but at the same time is we still at the whims of the universe at the whims of of the the harsh environment you know life is is, is right. just a wicked environment um right. so we 
from time to time because we are forced to find ways to get ourselves out of a sticky situations. We we have these sparks of genius once in a while <laughs> it's, it's it's brilliant i mean I, so I i feel like there's just got to be somebody smiling down going oh it's like when you watch your kids and you and you know that you know they're like oh they can't get out of this one and then all of a sudden like they wiggle their way down like the 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 drain or something like that and like somehow contort themselves and you're like ah yeah okay yeah. All right, too, too it's, it's, <laughs> it's about the law the, uh, the laws of the large numbers because uh they're gonna try a thousand things one of them it bound to be able to get you somewhere yeah. get you yeah. closest to something and and that's a, that's that's you the universe stop. in 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 essence like it's all random and so you try all combinations and then you uh you know hold on to the ones that work and the one that doesn't work you know just just let it fade into the the darkness right and so that's how i see the, the universe um there's no to me, there's no ultimate like, hey, the universe is is watching you in a way the universe doesn't care about us because the universe is is huge and we just expect yeah, it, cares, it cares about everything. Like, I mean, it's got it's got a it's got a whole lot of things to, to worry about and keeping harmony and balance, you know, like right. not, not just right. us. We're just we're just a little dumb. Which is a spec the, and which yeah. is which is a, a a little a blip, right? In yeah. in in space, a spec in space and a blip in time. Right. And so the universe, you know, it's one of those things where we think we know the universe and we think the universe revolves around us. Um, just like we think the sun revolves around us in the beginning. <laughs> right. It's, it's not, it's, you know, what we see is not all there is. So, um, yeah, but you got to give us some credit, man. We're, uh, we're, 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 we can be pretty smart sometimes, you know, or, or, we, or pretty creative, you know, uh, I mean, yes, it, yes, it, yes. And, 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 you know, and for us, we like catapult our species just like millions of years into the future constantly, you know, yes. I mean, and, like, I mean, it's, it's no doubt. I mean, we are the apex of, uh, the apex species, uh, right now. And, and that, you know, that's something, um, right. but if, if you're, if you're pitting, humans against the universe um it seems like a very very tall order <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you, we, you we, want to we, pit us against some some uh, another species of alien I, or whatever maybe there's there's uh, some contest but uh i mean do you think the universe do you think if the universe gave us a a, a billion years of, uh, of, of you don't think we could catch up to to all the to all the secrets uh you know Hell no. You don't think so? No. I mean, I, I don't. The there's universe got, got, is. Gotta be a I mean, you can't even point. count. We can't even count how many um, stars. Oh, no, no. Let me, let me rephrase that. We can't even count how many galaxies there are in a universe. Right. Yet to count the stars in a galaxy. Yet to count the, the planets inside the, uh, the galaxy. Right? There are so many galaxies that you don't. And each galaxy contains, you know hundreds of, of, of planets, or even millions good, good of point. planets, good, right? Good, good, so good, we can't even maybe, count maybe that. How can word. you say there's the <laughs> secrets that we go? So to me, <laughs> it's... Uh, you're, you're right. And I, I'm, I, maybe let's just say humans versus the earth. You know, how about that? You know? Uh, yeah, um, and I still say there's still uh, a tall order, even for the earth, because uh, Mother Nature is still wicked, and Mother Nature is trying to kill us. You know, you know, what's, you know, what's funny about this whole thing is, is we think that we're so smart for, for, you know, syn syn creating synthetic fertilizers. And we're like, well, you know, the universe has been creating fertilizer for forever, you know, to be able to like feed everybody. Like they just did it in a more sustainable. Where does the nitrogen <laughs> come from? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, hey, hey, I, I, I created nitrogen. No, you didn't. He's like, he's like, you, no, you, yeah, yeah. You, you create fertilizer, but fertilizer is nothing more than nitrogen uh in another form so you figured out how right. to put it into the form you right. haven't created anything yet no and so, no, no I, I know. so, so I, for I, us is you know we we are um a baby compared to an adult so mother nature yep. is is uh it's gonna win even if you if you uh said you know humans versus uh the earth the earth still wins i i agree i mean i i mean there's not there's not even a debate here <laughs> <laughs> 
the, the title was kind of a joke. It's just, it's just funny that we keep trying to do this shit. Like, mm-hmm. and it, it, I mean, you know, I don't, it, a hard, part of me is like, just is, is kind of proud of, of, of humans for being able to like unlock these, these tiny little nuggets each, you know, a little bit to continue to, to, yes, to yes. spur us on. I mean, once when we, we pressure you know. into a survival, um, we become, you know, we, we get some sparks of, uh, of genius here and there, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, it's pretty prolong cool. the the race for another hundred years or a thousand years or a million years, but you know that's still a uh, not a blip in in the timeline. Um, right. So, but you know it it's still it's still we are still the the best in our little circles. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's something. There you go. Uh, yes. Yes. So uh, yes. Uh, anyway, it was an interesting book. Uh, once again, the question is: is how do the actions you make impact all the things around you? So just you know consider consider what you do and, and, you know, how, how the ramifications that, you know, all around you. Yeah. yeah. So to me, the actions that we make, it does impact the things around us, but within our circles, not in the, in the universal ah, sense. I don't just, I, I don't agree with that. Actually. I think, I think, uh, you know, the actions that we take affect, uh, there's a reflection I just wrote that it will get to, you know, in, in months to come. Um, mm-hmm. It was about yeah the thin, the thin thread that sep- that, that connects, you and hundreds of thousands of lives to come in the past and the future and the present but it, like, uh, I'm, impacts yeah. people around you but not the universe itself um if, if that's the que- ah. if that's a question because ah. whether with humans inside the blip of the universe or not the universe doesn't feel a thing it doesn't it is an impact in the universe impact things around you like you and i can talk right you talk like you know if i smile at you you smile back at me it's, right. it's basically that kind of impact, but not the impact of saying, hey, you know, because humans were exists in this universe, the universe has uh, somehow, you know, have a different path, a different trajectory, whatever. That's, that's, that's just, you know, silly. <laughs> I, I agree. No, I, I didn't, I didn't mean that. I meant, I meant humans. The yeah. Yeah. Humans, it, it, yeah. It does. It yeah. does. I mean, the thing yeah. is what, I mean, the thing is, in the, in the, I mean, the thing is, the question to me is, uh, is a separate topic uh, compared to the reflection title. Uh, so, the actions yeah, yeah. around you, it's it's going to be an impact. Everything you do become has a ripple effect. Right. Okay. Because uh, the the way that you know um, the hyper part that what the the process of converting um, nitrogen from the air into fertilizer is a pivotal moment in human history right right it is a big impact it it, it allow us to survive um you know another an, another you know how many thousand of years that is you know otherwise you know the the, the mass salvation would become a reality um and then we are going to be facing more and more uh challenges like this but we're also going to be um you know taking lessons from our history and the things that we do compounds to the point where we're able to understand how to um capitalize on on the spark of genius that comes to us when 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 we in dire needs and so to me everything we do has an impact but it, yeah. within that within that circle within that realm of of humans it's it's funny you mentioned the, the spark of genius it, it does it does always tend in my opinion and actually this is another reflection down the road that it tends tends to come from pain it tends to come from you know being spurred it's, it's on from, by you from, know, from a a, a uncomfort pressure a pressure discomfort. of some yeah. sort right right, right. so yeah. it's you're in a dire uh desperate situation and that pressure um sparks that genius and so, right. so usually a lot of the the pivotal um ideas and concept came out of adversity right that's and that's probably why you're seeing like a an uplift in like green technology actually, you know, making an imp- uh, ma- people actually adopting it, and 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 the and the urgency feels a little bit more there than it was when I was, you know, than twenty than it was twenty years ago, where people were like, yeah, I don't, I don't care, like you know, like I don't, it's not not a big deal yet, you know. I feel like it's getting to the point in time where it's still not urgent yet, but it's like it feels like the urgency is ramping up just a little bit. With yeah, I going, mean, anything ah, that shit. we that that we basically are um, predicted or plan. Um, you say isn't isn't a genius uh, we're talking about the genius some of uh, something like this it comes out of, of nowhere 
So anything that we do, do with greenhouse and all that, it's just a ploy for us to fool ourselves. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, what I, that's what I believe. Um, because if, if, for example, this thing just came out of nowhere, the atomic bomb came out of nowhere. Because right. in, in, the, in the dire need, um, we create that and it just comes, hey, this is it. It's just overnight. And anything that we say, okay, we are going to be like greenhouse and all that. And that's just, we're just fooling ourselves in, in saying what we're trying to do is going to help the planet. But, right. you know, whatever we plan is, um, is not, it's not along the line of, of the genius we're talking about. Yeah, it's probably because those story. doesn't save us. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, anyway, it's an interesting topic to think about. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a cool book. So I, I would, I would recommend it. I would recommend um, all of Thomas Hager's books, actually, that I've, that I've read so far. And we'll talk about more to come here. But um, So uh, you mentioned about Hitler. Um, any comments in, in that regard? Yeah, I mean, Hitler wasn't a big part of this, you know, whole entire conversation. It was more about how the, the, the macro dynamics of the time period and how this discovery, which was initially because of the whole potential food crisis thing and then German industry was really good with with chemical productions and uh and had a lot of like you know industrial mm -hmm. uh um, might and and you know a lot of very very technical savvy like it like the people that were in there were searching for a solution around something similar like this and then the world and then the world war ii and world war one started happening around the same time frame and hitler used you know some of the the production facilities and the the whole Faber Bosch methodology. Um, mm -hmm. It's like it's it's like its own like manufacturing process. Um, uh, and uh, um, this is uh, so. You think uh, you think that without this process, Hitler wouldn't have been able to do what he he had done. No, it, it actually, if anything, it was probably a negative because it, it sustained the war a little bit further because they were able to a make more food and b produce more weapons and arms with the the fertilizer. Oh, okay, um, okay. Yeah, uh, it, it it wasn't necessarily it it wasn't like yeah, it wasn't guys, in favor of Hitler. No, no, they they weren't doing this for Hitler. They were doing this for the no, world. no, no. I'm just talking about the the act of having this technology. It's not further hitler's goal no but no. The, to kind of like help the allies survive longer to contain hitler because if, if 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 we if the allies had uh been defeated earlier then hitler would have got what he wanted yeah, correct yes yeah i mean it, it it definitely helped to prolong the war um is is, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. the sentiment of the right right uh, so, of, of so surviving yeah. surviving helps put hitler to uh, to his place yeah um it, you could you could look at it like that for sure so it mm -hmm. it, okay. it it just that's interesting you know, yeah once again it wasn't it wasn't a um it wasn't really a commentary on on nazi germany it was just it was just a weird time frame how it all lined up to it and, and these people just happened to be scientists actually one of them i think was um was jewish i think uh, carl haber um uh, if I remember right, um, Fritz, Fritz, Haber. Fritz Haber, uh, I think he was, I think he was Jewish actually. Um, or maybe, maybe that was the other, I, I may be confusing that with another book of this guy, because another book that he wrote about was about Nazi Germany. It was called the, De the demon under the microscope. And it was about, uh, we'll talk about that one in the future, but it was about, okay. um, first yeah. discovery of antibiotics. Don't want to spoil that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. All right. Well, let's just cut it off here. Cause we'll keep going and, and we'll yeah, go down a yeah. rabbit hole, but, uh, but yeah, that no, it's an it, interesting book. Check it out. Yeah. Okay. So we will leave you with, with that and we'll uh, check back tomorrow. Sounds good. See ya. See ya.